Hey, what's going on? It's Greg with Lift Fitness. I'm coming at you with some beautiful workout finishers. Now, workout finishers, what are they? It's basically uh, kind of like the high intensity interval training that we often do. However, it's designed to be done at the end of a workout. You can do it after a long rest, you can do it after your heavy uh, workouts, which is typically what, when it is done after a strength training bout, so after your ISTs. Uh, or even your SBTs, but it's all about cramming out as many, uh, as much work as you can in a short amount of time. The different uh, part of this compared to your typical intervals or your typical uh, Tabatas is it's typically done in only about five to 15 minutes. So it's a whole lot smaller. Uh, it, it is not the entirety of the workout. It is uh, all about the metabolic rate. It's all about getting that metabolism screaming and it's done very, very quickly. So this is also something really good to do uh, if you are really short on time and you don't even have enough time for uh, one of your uh, 20, 25 minute Tabatas workouts. So this is beautiful. So uh, again, your workout finishers, five to 10 minutes, very, very cool stuff. Now I'm going to explain just a little bit about uh, the different kinds of workout finishers and the main kind of focuses that you have here. Uh, it's all outlined. Now before we get into that, workout finishers are not for everyone. It's definitely tough uh, and just like all the, the, the most things out there, uh, unlike uh, dark chocolate, delicious. Uh, and uh, episodes of Family Guy, uh, it should be done in moderation. So you don't wanna do it every time. You need to give yourself a little bit of rest because uh, in between uses, so um, give it no less than uh, 24 hours uh, and definitely even longer, a couple days. Uh, so really use it in moderation. Don't do it every after every workout or else you're gonna burn yourself out. And it's gonna lead to an overuse injury. So you do wanna be careful. Um, just like uh, with its bodice, it's done in spurts. So if you did that stuff over and over and over again, you are probably getting hurt. All right, so that being said, uh, it's great because it's going to improve so many things just all across the board. Your VO2 max, which just means you're, you're essentially your heart is a whole lot stronger. You've got the capabilities uh, of uh, endurance, but it's really, really short bursts. So you're not doing a, a, tw a 12 hour run or even a, uh, the more logical hour long runs. What you're doing is you're really bu uh, building up that heart rate, build, or not the heart rate, but the, the strength, the uh, cardiovascular system, which is very, very important. You're able to draw in more oxygen into uh, the lungs with each breath, which means you have that endurance. Uh, you're also building up lots and lots of great strength. Uh, and it's, it's just all across the board, pretty much awesome. So uh, again, here's your workout finishers. Uh, they're basically set up in uh, reps for time. This is how uh, we typically do it. So uh, the time base is what our Tabatas is typically done. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start right there. Uh, it's good and quick. Uh, the big one is a 2010. Now 2010, you can do that, uh, I often, uh, prescribe it as eight sets. I usually do uh, one or two different exercises. Uh, I usually do one when I'm prescribing this as a finisher. So you do one exercise, you'll just do 20 seconds of it, 10 seconds of rest, you're gonna do that eight times, but it's the same exercise over and over and over. Now you can uh, do that a little bit longer because this is only gonna be about four minutes. You can go a little bit heavier so you can hit the uh, ideal five to 15, uh, or you can do this uh, two or three times to get well within that, that uh, uh, range. But this is the, uh, the basic uh, uh, one as far as the bodies goes. And it is a, uh, can be used as a workout finish. Your next one is a good one. We rarely do in our training, but it's a 60-60 continuous. And something like this, you'll typically use uh, two different exercises. Uh, so you'll spend 60 seconds, 60 seconds, 60 seconds, 60 seconds. You'll go for as long as you can handle uh, until you just totally are just done. So an example would be like upper body and a lower body. It's typically how you want to split it up when you're doing a workout finisher. So a great uh, setup might be a uh, sprint uh, or a band sprint, what I like because I don't like to move too far. Uh, I like to use our, our workouts in a small space. I don't have a whole lot of room, so I'll tie a band to it, uh, to a, an anchor, and I'll just jog in place or sprint in place uh, or move it front to back. So I'm hitting lower body. Uh, another good one is pull squats. It tends to get a lot of lower and back. Uh, and then a, uh, another one would be set up uh, like an upper, like a, uh, a presser. So you want lower and upper is a possible option. So sprints uh, and then like a, a band press or push-ups, uh, band press or push-ups. Uh, so lower upper split, that is absolutely a viable way that you would set up one of your uh, uh, workouts. Uh, if you have three, what you might do is a lower and a core and an upper. So lower core, upper. So again, you're divvying it up uh, so that you're not hitting the same muscle over and over and over again. Again, that would lead to overuse injury. So very, very quick. Lower core and upper or lower and upper if that's the case. Uh, so we'll write that lower, upper. You can also go a presser and a polar. Now your presser is gonna be your chest presses, your overhead presses. Uh, your press is gonna be a squat 
as well. Your polars are going to be a deadlift. Your polars are going to be a rows. Your polars are going to be chin-ups and the like. All right, so uh, uh, polars. We want deadlift. We want uh, your rows and chin-ups. So any kind of a row, if it ends with row, it's a polar. Uh, Chin-up is another one. Pressers, chest press, overhead press. Uh, so push-up is also a chest press. Your overhead press. And then finishing all up with your squat is a presser as well. So that's typically how you'll divvy it up. Again, if you have three, then you'll throw in a core. If you have four, then what I would do is lower, upper, lower, upper, or a presser, puller, presser, puller, something along that. But you won't usually get into four exercises. The whole goal of a workout finisher is to be simple uh, and to just provide a totally kick butt workout in minimal time. So very, very efficient with your time to get that metabolism strength. So these are uh, the way that you'd set it up. These are typically what I'd recommend uh, and work with my clients for uh, when it's a time-based workout finisher. Now, going on reps, we didn't get to have a whole lot more variety with this. And this is where I really like to have fun with it because it can go so crazy with it. This is very constrained. Uh, it's very within the rules. You hit it. Uh, if you're not hitting it, you've got to keep going. Don't stop till you can't. Right. Here, we have a little bit more uh, variety, a little bit more fun. So a ladder is a really, really common one. Now, a ladder would start one uh, with one rep. This is typically done with two or more exercises. I often do this with three, but to keep it with simplicity uh, purposes, let's go back to uh, our push-up exercise uh, and our sprint. Push-up and sprint. These are going to be our two exercises. So we will do one rep of a push-up, so one push-up, and then go immediately into one sprint. And that would be, uh, if we're doing a sprint, you might set that as time-based, so like five seconds of sprint uh, would be one repetition. Or if you're actually moving front to back, that would be 10 feet uh, and then uh, and back. So you might backpedal if that's the case. Uh, so one push-up, one sprint. Uh, and then you go to two. Two push-ups, two sprints out there and back, out there and back. Or two times five seconds for a rep would be 10 seconds. Uh, and then you go three, four, five, six, all the way up to 10 until you're doing 10 push-ups and 10 times that sprint. You do the math, you're actually doing 100 reps. So it really loads it up. If you're really crazy, then you start descending as well. So you can do the ascending, and then you can do the descending, which starts at 10 reps and goes down to one. I prefer the ascending because it really loads up the heavy rep at the very end, and I like that big challenge, that big push. Or you can go both, which is ascending, descending. You're going to build from one all the way to 10, and then bring it back down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then you're hitting about 190 reps. It's freaking awesome. And that's per exercise. It will light you up. This will take about 10 minutes, maybe a touch longer, depending. So plus or minus a little bit. So your ladders, those are beautiful, beautiful progressions. You can do that. Sets, your rest pause. So basically you have a set number of sets that you wanna hit. I wanna hit 10 sets of this. You don't, you're not thinking so much about reps. You're just going to go until you can't go anymore. For example, let's do a, uh, a overhead press or a squat press because it hits both. We can do one exercise. It's very compact. I'll give you the exercise to do, but we'll say push press. So you're squatting down, push it up overhead. So you got dumbbells. Boom, boom, boom. So we're going to go with whatever weight we've got. Maybe it's heavy, maybe it's light. We're going to go until we can't go anymore. So ideally, probably a little bit heavier is going to be a little bit better for this one. I'll explain a little bit more for your finishers. But we hit, mm, let's say, 25. We're able to crank out 25, and then we can't go anymore. So we pause. We pause for as long as we can, uh, up until no longer than about 30 seconds. And then we go again until failure. And then again, pause, and then we go until failure. So first set, we hit 25. Second set, we may be hitting uh, like 15. And let's say our goal set is 10. So there's two sets there. Next set, we're gonna hit maybe 10. Uh, after that, we're hitting like eights, sevens, and then sixes, and sixes, and sixes, and sixes, and then we hit five for the final sets. So you're not hitting nearly as many reps, uh, but uh, you are nailing lots and lots of sets. And you're just taking about 30 seconds of rest in between each set to keep it going. So sets are a rest pause setup. Wait. Focus. I love these because the reps, uh, again, you're going to have high reps, uh, but the focus uh, and the change that we're, uh, the variable we're changing is the resistance uh, here. So we're changing the number of reps here. We are, are uh, uh, changing the number uh, or the uh, amount of resistance here. So uh, this is really important. You got to have uh, lots of weights for this uh, in this case. So let's say uh, we're doing 
Uh, perfect one. Let's go back to that push up, push press setup. Let's start it all off with 25s. We're going for burnouts. Now, burnout is you're gonna, uh, or run the rack, it's, it's uh, called both. You're gonna start with those 25s, you're gonna do as many as you can. Let's say we hit those 25s, and our shoulders are shot, we're tired. We put the weight down, we immediately pick up the next pair of weights. So that would go 25s down to 20s typically, and do as many of those. When you are tired, you can't do any more. Oh man, and form is starting to suffer. You put that down, grab a lighter weight. Uh, up and down, up and down, until you get at least four for the big major muscle groups, uh, which are uh, the chest, the backs, the quads, and the, the booty, uh, or maybe a little bit less, three, uh, or if it's a small one, if you're doing something for like curls, um, and just trying to get a good pump, uh, then only about three, but you can go as much as the entire rack. So you start, if you're going for 12, start with 12, you go 12s, 10s, 8s, 5s, and if they have a two hour three, you'll do that, and this is great because you will light it up uh, even with like two pounds, you're like, oh, I can't push it up anymore. You get a great pump. It's beautiful. And it encourages so much growth hormone, which is phenomenal to help boost a little bit more muscle tone, muscle growth. So it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful setup. Uh, so I really love burnouts and run the racks, which are, are synonymous. So your reps and your times, that's what we got going on. This is the way it's typically set up. Uh, so you kind of know all about that. Uh, your 60-60s or 2010s, uh, eight circuits at least, if not longer. Uh, and very, very little rest in between it. Now I should mention, again, don't do this too frequently because when you start getting really, really tired, you're gonna get fatigue, and fatigue is gonna predispose you to uh, injury because your form is gonna suffer. Your push presses move from here to, oh, oh, this, right? So really be careful about that. Stop and be smart on your workout finishers, but push yourself, keeping good form. This is great with the fitness.